My name is uh, Kyrre Rikertsen and uh, my quarter guide is also here. We will talk about personality traits and the consumption of wine and beer. So that means a little bit of everything. Uh, we have studied uh, alcohol consumption before in Norway and wine consumption specifically in the paper and then we found that very many variables affected the consumption of wine in Norway over time. Uh, like income, uh, obviously. And also prices have been quite stable, so they didn't have so much of an effect. But also marriage, education, place of living, attitudes, towards religion and hedonism. And also we use some age period code variables. But we did not look at the effect of personality traits. And we did not look at beer, so that's in a way new. So we will look at what is called the so-called ocean traits. There are five traits. Uh, they are summarized in the words openness to experience, conscientiousness, extraversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. <laughs> and they are considered to be quite stable over the lifetime. <clears throat> uh, these traits have been used to study the effects of consumption of a lot of uh, food attributes and also for wine taste, for sweet taste in white wine, actually. And also food values they have been used to study, organic local foods and genetically modified foods. So what we want to do now is to investigate the effects of the ocean traits on wine consumption and beer consumption, actually. And we want to see if it's any differences in, on, in the traits of wine and beer drinkers. <coughs> so here are a bit more about the traits. I don't have much time to go into it, but uh, the five traits uh, are defined by the American uh, Psychological Association in 2007. And we use a 20 item version of it. A short one that you can do in a survey. It's developed uh, specifically for that survey by some psychologists. Uh, we used a big uh, Norwegian survey for the year 2015. It's the most comprehensive consumer survey in Norway. Uh, it's conducted biannually since 1985, but only for that year they included uh, those traits so we could analyze it. So it's about 3,482 respondents that we use that are, we are looking at respondents aged between 18, not one, 18 and 80 years. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote one. Uh, the independent variable uh, is the frequency in frequency form because they answer how often do you drink wine and how often do you drink beer. So it's a frequency that we have as the dependent variable. And we use then the 20 items. So here's the percentage distribution in raw data about the frequency of consumption. What we can note is that there are very few daily wine drinkers, also quite few drink that drink wine three to five times a week, but it's about 5% maybe in total. And also it's a substantial proportion of the sample that do not drink beer and do not drink wines, particularly beer, a quarter of the sample do not drink beer. Uh, so then, we have some quite sophisticated econometric models that we don't have time to go much into. But first, we know that these uh, traits, they are constructed on the basis of uh, answers on 20 items. So we need a um, way to do that. And we uh, do that by uh, item response theory, which is one of several possibilities. And we also use a double censored beta regression model because the data are bounded to be between zero and one the way we construct them. Because some people do not consume, they are zero, and some people consume every day, that's one, so it's a double bounded thing. Uh, then we also look at the significance of these traits, but we also use the model to predict differences in expected consumption frequencies for response with different personality traits. That's to get the feeling for the magnitudes. Still not two minutes, I hope. <laughs> Plenty of time. <laughs> Good. So uh, here it's uh, the effects we find of the ocean traits on wine and beer consumption. These are statistical significance. So it's not saying anything about the magnitude at this stage, only is it significant or not. And we find that more of these traits are statistically significant for wine than beer consumption. So for example, we find that uh, openness, people that are open, they have a lower probability of not drinking wine. That's not drinking wine. <coughs> 
uh, they also have one increased frequency of wine consumption. When it comes to conscientiousness, we find that uh, people that are conscientious, they drink less uh, frequently beer. When it comes to extraversion, we find that uh, wine drinkers, they have a lower probability of not drinking wine if they are extrovert. Yes. Uh, and then when it comes to agreeableness, they have one increased probability of not drinking beer and uh, a reduced uh, probability of drinking uh, wine every day. For the frequency, it's a reduced frequency of wine consumption as well. <clears throat> so it, to get the one idea about uh, the quantitative importance of each of these factors, we did a simulation exercise. So we calculated the consumption frequencies for the 10% scoring highest on each trade and the consumption frequency for the 10% scoring lowest. So we have these two quantiles and we look at the difference between these quantiles then and kept all other variables at the mean values. <coughs> so when we did that, we found some statistical differences. Uh, they are marked in green, but it's not so easy to see it's green up here. But we find, for example, if you look at openness, we find that people that are in the highest quantile on openness, they drink wine about uh, almost five times more occasions per year than other people. So this is per year. Uh, and we find that extrovert people, that's also uh, significant, they drink wine almost four times more frequently. And people that are agreeable, they drink wine uh, less frequent, about four times. For beer drinkers, it's no significant differences. So that means that beer drinkers, they are distributed evenly uh, across the distribution of these traits. So the conclusion stand, we find that high frequency of wine consumption is associated with high scores on openness and extraversions and low scores on agreeableness. We find that high frequency of beer consumption is associated with a high score on extraversion. We think that these results are plausible in the sense that extroversion, it would be associated with participating in social events like this. And when you go to social events, it's frequently consumed wine or beer. So it's, it's no big surprise in a way. Openness, it's associated with openness uh, for new experiences and also to have a high cultural capital. And it seems like wine drinkers or people that have that drink more wine. <coughs> Agreeableness may be a bit more difficult to explain why uh, agreeable people uh, drink uh, less, but it could be that it's associated with some other traits like uh, or uh, attitudes like they are more religious or something like that. Could be that, we don't know. And we also have very many other significant variables that we don't have time to discuss. So thank you very much for your attention. <coughs> thank you.